All right, we are live. If you're in the channel, thanks for joining us. Uh, we are Adventures in Lollygagging. We're doing uh, we're doing a Mutineer Zero Gen Lab Alpha campaign here. Normally, we play Zweihander in a weekly podcast on Mondays. That com comes out every Monday, so you can find that there. And then we've been playing some Shinobagami lately, which is more like a one-shot game. Uh, but I've been wanting to play Mutineer Zero from Free League uh, for a while, and I finally convinced these people uh, to play. Uh, so tonight's just going to be a session zero, basically. So if you're unfamiliar with what that means, what we're just going to do is make characters, develop some stuff, uh, little bits and pieces of the world, maybe, uh, that kind of thing. Um, some of these players have read the rules, some have skimmed it, and some, uh, when I, or like rules, there's rules. Uh, so anyway, we don't have any character names up yet because we're actually going to make everything tonight. Uh, so next, next time we play, we'll have all sorts of character stuff up as well. Uh, but, uh, I don't think we really need to do any sort of major introductions yet because you don't have anything to introduce yet. Uh, so I think let's, uh, let's dive in. Um, yeah. So hopefully you have read enough or looked enough at the game to recognize this is uh, basically a, a post-apocalyptic uh, a post-apocalyptic game. So all of the Mutineer Zero games, and there's four of them currently, are all set in sort of the same continuous world. Uh, so the first one was like the Path to Eden, uh, which was just a basic Mutineer Zero. It would have to do with like animal mutant or excuse me, human mutants. The second one that came out was Gen Lab Alpha. That's what we're playing which has to do with animal mutants. Uh, the third one is called Mechatron, and it has to do with robots. And the fourth one is Elysium, which has to do with pure blood humans. Uh, and all of them kind of have like their own story. They have their own little, little campaign. Um, we're starting with Gen Lab Alpha, and if we like it, we might do other stuff later. Uh, but Gen Lab Alpha it takes place within Paradise Valley. Uh, so players, you can you should be able to like see the actual map uh, on our Roll20. Uh, and you can see a basic layout of it. You all have a general understanding of where everything is. So uh, the the population of Paradise Valley is mixed up with about nine different tribes of animals or nine different habitats worth of animals. Uh, and there's different groups. So there's like the dog tribe, there's the cat tribe, there's the rat tribe, rabbit tribe, uh, badger tribe, bear tribe. Um, reptile tribe, moose tribe. I, th I think that's all of them. I might have missed one. Uh, but uh, reptile. I think I said reptile, but I probably oh. missed one. Anyway, the point is, is that each one of those habitats is populated by usually somewhere between like you know fifty and like two hundred different animal mutants. And by animal mutants, we're very much talking about like humanoid animals so you look like a bear but you're basically a human bear yet or you look like a dog but you're basically a human dog um and the the thing with paradise valley however is that it is an enclosed place now despite the fact that we're used to with like post-apocalyptic worlds like kind of dry mad max type landscape uh that is not necessarily the case with paradise valley uh because paradise valley where this game's going to take place is a fairly verdant uh, valley filled with some some large mountains, uh, some lush lush forests, uh, but also some like run down places because it used to be like a ski lodge here, hunting cabin there, that kind of stuff. So we still have a lot of that degradation uh, that we're used to seeing uh, in our um, you know in, in, in normal uh, kind of post apocalyptic settings. But we also have this fence that goes all the way around Paradise Valley. And it's an electrified fence that does not, that has, there's no breaches. There's no way over it. It's highly protected uh, and your animals can't get out, right? This is, this isn't spoiler. This is just sort of set up. Uh, and so for all this time, for all these years and decades, uh, animal mutants have been living within this valley, uh, unsure if humans even exist anymore. Uh, it's on, they, they've taken on kind of like a, a mythical quality. Like, do they exist? Maybe they do. Um, the remnants of human technology, however, still exists within the valley and in a very terrifying way. Uh, so the valley is beset or at least or at least guarded over by watchers, um, observers, the stuff like, you know, those are sort of the phrases. There are drones and machines and robots that uh, tend to parole, uh, patrol like the various habitats, the various fences, different checkpoints and stuff all throughout the valley. And 
they periodically like they'll they'll do all sorts of raids on some of the habitats uh, of these animals sometimes they'll they'll just kill certain animals just because uh, sometimes they'll abduct them and make them disappear uh, bring them into uh, some some special locations or unknown locations occasionally those that are abducted will come back but they'll be different they might have like part robotic stuff grafted onto them. They might have been subject to some sort of crazy experimentation. Um, but for, for whatever reason, the animals have been living in this valley for all of their lives. Uh, and they, they don't see humans. Some of them, however, um, are getting to the point where they're getting restless and they don't necessarily view the watchers uh, with the kind of reverence and fear that they used to. And they've started to develop a resistance, uh, this this goal of kind of breaking out of the valley itself. And that's what you all are a part of. So as player characters, all of your animals will be part of that resistance. You'll go on various uh, missions and things like that to try to um, find a way out of the valley. And that's going to be our basic campaign. It's that you're members of the resistance itself. Um, this game is like one of the things they tell you like through like character creation is like even though it's kind of it's kind of goofy at times in the sense that like you're a big bear that's like smoking a cigarette and swinging a baseball bat. Uh, they still suggest that you take kind of a have make sure that you have a some sort of serious center to it in addition to like the comedic aspects that you might be able to come up with because the story itself is actually pretty dark uh, when we get into it. Uh, so anyway, that's sort of like the overview uh, of of Gen Lab Alpha, do you have any? Do all of you have any questions uh, before we dive into actual character creation? No, not yet. Okay, I'm gonna print off this so handy character sheet from the rule book. Yeah, there's plenty of stuff up there uh, on the rule book. You can also go into um, our. Uh, if you actually look on our roll twenty. There in one of the handouts, there's a character creation steps. I'll go ahead and show it to you right now. This is basically the 14 step process to creating a character uh, for Mutant Year Zero for you know for for how this will work. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that we got to cover tonight, including how the roles look, because this game itself is a little different than the things we've been playing. Um, it's also different than Zweihander, which a couple of the people in here are playing, Melissa and Ashley and Long. It's not a D100 system. This is a D6, a dice pool system. Uh, and there's, like, you, what you do is whenever you're, you still got your skill tests and stuff like that. It's, you know, your, your standard tropes for, for role-playing games. But how you go about kind of creating that dice pool system is a little different. Um, so if you can, if you look on the, character creation uh, steps, uh, the first thing that you need to do is you need to pick an animal. So by animal, what they mean is on the first hand, it's it's one of the, the tribes, but then you pick a species. So again, there's dogs, cats, rats, bears, apes, rabbits, badgers, reptiles, and moose. Those are the nine separate types of animals. And then there's specific species that can exist within them. So, for example, dogs can be dogs, foxes, and wolves. Uh, cats can be cats, cougars, and lynxes. Bears can be both bears and raccoons. Uh, apes can be chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans. Uh, now, the specific type of animal is important because that dictates a few different things. So, like which which habitat or you know which animal species excuse me, which animal uh, tribe that you pick is going to dictate two things. It's going to dictate one, your key attribute, meaning uh, it's going to be like your key attribute is going to be one of your statistics. So this game has four. Uh, there's strength, agility, instinct, and wits. And so each one of the animals has uh, are a little bit better at one of those than others. So dogs, for instance, are really good at instincts. Uh, bears, on the other hand, are really good at strength. Um, cats are great at agility, that kind of thing. This is going to impact when you start to allocate your stats in a few steps, uh, because you get a certain amount of uh, attribute points that you can allocate. And then depending upon which of the, the animals you picked, you might, you can actually take your key attribute higher than some of the others. Uh, another thing that your animal type determines is the specific animal powers that you get to use. So in this game, 
each animal has special things. They might be really good at jumping, really good at climbing. Uh, they might have like dark vision, essentially stuff like that. Uh, but certain animals only gain access to certain certain powers, and so that's one thing to consider. And then the final thing, and this one's kind of actually funny. Uh, the way you recover certain uh, certain damage that you took or certain trauma that you took, uh, one of the things that you have to do to recover your your instinct is like you have to do some sort of special animal thing. And so for dogs, it's like you have to be part of the pack. And like for bears, you have to go like on a walkabout by yourself. With rabbits, you got to have sex with other rabbits. And that's <laughs> how you gain your some of your, your trauma back. It's pretty great. Uh, so you all probably want to take a look at that. I can answer questions about them because remember we have a map in place. Uh, you can see where generally their habitats are. All of you will basically be living in these habitats. Uh, there's one sort of exception. If anybody wants to do something weird, uh, you can be what's called a, a tainted animal, uh, which means like you're, you're part, you're part human mutant, which is like the first game and part animal mutant. It's up to you. You don't have to do it. It gives you access to some extra powers, but it also limits how many animal powers that you can get. So it's like you, it's a, there's a trade-off to it. It also means that you tend to be kind of a social outcast. In terms of like the general way in which these animals are viewed, uh, dogs are kind of the... Uh, they're the closest thing to collaborators uh, with the, uh, the observers and the watchers in the valley. Uh, they're... They tend to their like their specific habitat called the lodge uh, is the closest to where like a lot of the the watchers and the observers come from, which is somewhere like in the mountain, and they tend to get preferable treatment. Uh, they get a, they get access to a lot of resources and stuff that the robots and stuff will come give them. That tends to create some some rough feelings with with other with other tribes. Um, they. They also tend to be the focal point of trade. So there's like a, a trading post and stuff like that. So more people come and kind of exchange things. Uh, cats are, if I recall correctly, cats are basically at, ro at war with rats. So cats and rats uh, definitely don't get along. Um, it doesn't really. Oh, Jerry. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't really matter if you want to create it. If like, if one of you wants to create a cat and one of you wants to get a rat, it's fine. Like we can create characters outside of, but that's just generally where we're at. Cats tend to be a little bit more aloof and and try to kind of keep their distance from others. Um, rats, uh, like I said, they they uh, they deal with they they're at war with cats. Rats also include things like uh, like squirrels or and other types of rodents. Uh, bears tend to be a little bit more solitary in a way. Like they still have packs and they still have a habitat, but they often like to just. They like to go have their me time uh, occasionally. Um, apes they live on an uh, they live in the middle of this very large river. There's a there's a pair of islands sitting in this river, and they all kind of mix and match there. Um, some of the apes, like the older apes, tend to be more accommodating and respectful towards watchers. The younger apes tend to be a little bit more um, I don't know socially conscious. They want to they kind of resist and rebel. Uh, rabbits are like crazy rabbits are like warfaring uh they tend to be pretty aggressive uh they tend to also be the most at least at the start of the game they're one of the more um willing to be insurgents um see badgers and badgers and reptiles don't really get along there's not they're not like outright war the way that like rats and cats are but they uh they don't really get along too well um and the the moose are different. Moose don't have a habitat. They don't actually have a place on the map. You won't be able to find it anywhere. They're really just like, they just roam. They just, they're isolated roamers. Moose also include deer and reindeer if you want to want to do that as well. Uh, so you might want to take a look at them. Also, um, if you have up your PDFs, uh, page 16 has a list, has a list of all the different tribes and page 17 and 18 go over things like the types of naming conventions that the game has, which is pretty interesting because certain certain animals tend to be named certain ways depending upon uh, like the whether or not they are still like keeping their lab name. Like dogs are named after astronauts and, and spacefarers and planets and stuff. Cats are named after ancient Romans. Rats are named after famous composers. 
bears are named after movie stars and apes are named after physicists, rabbits after football or soccer players, badgers after hockey players, reptiles after celebrities in the music business. You get a lot of like, yeah, there's like Elvis 48. For instance. Uh, and then moose are named after classic poets and novelists. So what were you all thinking? Because I know that you guys had some ideas uh, ahead of time, at least kind of thrown out some ideas. What are we thinking? I was going to play a fox. I'm going okay. to be a I'm going to be a badger, but a subclass Wolverine. OK, <laughs> I figured that <laughs> it makes perfect sense. OK. All right. So we've got a fox. We've got a Wolverine. So that's dog and that's dog and badger tribe. Yeah. Also going to be badger tribe and do a weasel. Okay, so we've got two in badger. We've got Melissa as a weasel. We've got Logan as a wolverine. Uh, okay, and then in the dog tribe, we had long. You were thinking of going a fox, you said? Yeah. All right, perfect. Uh, Ashley or Derek, you have any ideas what you were thinking? Yeah. Uh, depending on how roles pan out, I'll either be a reptile chameleon or a hare, so a rabbit. Okay. Uh, but yeah. Okay. Ashley, do you have a, a? You were talking cat yesterday. Yeah. Are you gonna do the mint julep thing? My idea. I, mean, I might. Yeah. <laughs> we'll cover that in a minute. Oh, it's okay. I've got the vapors. This you should just do. Uh, okay. Oh, I do declare. So cat tribe. Are you just going to be a regular house cat, or are you going to be some other specific kind of cat? I'm going to be like a like that picture I sent you, like that's a Siamese cat. Okay, got it. Ooh, like the Siamese cat from that one Disney movie, Oliver and Company. No, this one's that, different. This one quiet. was this, this one was creepy and wearing a dress and stuff. I like a Victoria. Oh, really, <laughs> gave me nightmares. I only slept for like four hours. Uh, okay, uh, and so we'll come back to Derek's in a second. So let's. Uh, so then, the next thing you do after picking your animal type uh, is you want to pick your your role. So there are five roles in the game. Uh, role is it's like class or profession. Is another way of thinking about it. Uh, there's the warrior, uh, which is pretty standard warrior trope. There's the healer, which is pretty standard healer trope. Right. Uh, there is hunter, which is kind of like a ranger. Um, there's uh, scavenger. Scavengers are a little different. Uh, and then they're, they're like pack rats in a way, but not actual rats. They tend to collect a lot of things. They're good with finding stuff and they're good at um, kind of kind of knowing or comprehending like artifacts and stuff like that. Because as you artifacts are kind of like the, the catch all term for anything technological from the old world before the apocalypse that people find or that these, these animals find. So they're fairly good at kind of figuring that kind of stuff out. And then there's the seer, and seers are, um, they are a little bit more mystical. Uh, each one of the, the roles has its own specific uh, special kind of ability. It also has its own key attribute. So you, you already have one key attribute from your selections for, for your species. So Melissa and Logan, you are both one of your key attributes is strength and then long one of your key attributes is instinct and then ashley one of your key attributes is agility just remember that that's going to be important in a minute now if we go to roles um each each specific uh each specific role has a special skill that they only get access to uh so seers have the ability to scry. Uh, scrying is really quirky uh, because what they basically do is they predict something that happens that day or, or, or in the near future. And it's my job as a GM to try to help that come to pass in some way. And if it, if whatever they predict happens the way they said it happened, like they, there's, there's like bonus and stuff. So it's like this weird kind of quirky ability to kind of predict and manipulate, manipulate what might actually happen. Um, seers are also the most respected of all the roles in the, in, in each habitat or in each tribe so that you're, you have like the highest bonus to your rank 
uh, each tribe basically has a ranking system, uh, and part of that inf- part of that or influencing that is is your your actual role. So seers tend to get the biggest bonus; they're, they're most revered. Um, each role also has access to specific role talents. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, warriors have the special skill called measure enemy, which basically allows them to look at if they have time, like if they're, if they're like scouting out a potential fight, they can look at whoever it is they're fighting or they're about to fight, study them and get all sorts of bonuses and information uh, based upon that studying thing. So it gives them an intense amount of, uh, of effectiveness. Um, warriors tend, I think warriors are the second highest when it comes to reverence and rank. Uh, then you've got the hunter. Hunters are kind of like uh, take it or leave it. They're, they're not necessarily thought of poorly. They're not, they don't get any, I think they just get like a plus zero to their rank calculation. They have the ability to hunt, which means that they can go out and they can collect rations. This game, you do actually have to eat and drink. Um, you, there are there's ration management, and the hunter is the best suited to go out just into the wild and hunt and find something. That's their special skill. Uh, the healer can brew potions, uh, and so a lot of them are just pretty standard potions. So like basically healing potions. There's a healing potions for different types of uh, different types of damages and stuff like that. Um, and then the uh, scavenger is is the is a pretty quirky one the scavenger can okay so the scavenger what they do is they carry around with them like a either like a like a shopping cart or like a big old backpack and inside of the shopping cart or backpack it's just all sorts of junk like they're basically hoarders and they're the type that like when it when you're facing a situation and you need an item like you're like oh you know we could really use a crowbar right now like you can actually use their special skill called scavenge and like you can look through your stuff and if you pass the check you found a cross you, you found a crowbar like you're good you can also scavenge weapons and stuff like that uh and so it's pretty interesting so they're like they're like hoarders that's basically what they are so those are the different roles those are the five roles and since there's five people ideally let's make it so that everyone's got their own special role so we don't have any any overlaps uh so call out if you have a preference like a major preference you don't have to match the key attributes right you do not have to match the key attributes i was thinking hunter okay anybody else thinking hunter no all right all right melissa you are you you got that hunter uh so a hunter's key attribute is agility. So you now have strength and agility as your key attributes, Melissa. Okay. I was leaning warrior, but I'm not set in stone. But if anyone else wanted warrior, I'm fine with swapping to something else. Did anybody have a affinity for, for warriors? Yeah, I was deciding between warrior and scavenger. Okay. Uh, Ashley, what were you thinking? I was leaning towards healer or seer. Okay. Derek, what are you thinking? Uh, I was trying to be flexible. I'd prefer scavenger, but then I was willing to do um, uh, seer and then healer in that order. No one else said anything about scavenger, right? I think you're the only one who mentioned well, scavenger. was my second. It's your second? Okay. And your first, what was your first again, Long? Warrior. Okay. So, talk it out. Who, who wants what? Let's figure this out. Uh, let's see. Ashley's healer, because I don't think anybody... Right. No one healer, had... healer was probably my second choice, but okay. okay. Uh, let's see. What does everybody want to do? So we've got. What was your first choice, Long? Warrior. Okay. So, and your second choice was scavenger, and then Derek, you were saying scavenger or seer. Right. Okay. Yeah. Did anybody else want seer? Seer was my second choice. Okay. All right. So someone, someone, well, well let's roll for it. Let's roll for it. Let's Does do anybody it. else want healer? Was that Ashley's first? No, there was like, there are backups for it. Let's, what are you rolling? D6, let's... D10, D20, D100? Uh, let's do, uh, let's do D100s. So let's, okay. So you gotta let me say what we're rolling <laughs> first. Okay. No, so, I'm just ripping it. Dude. Just rip it. Okay. So if you want scavenger, roll a D100 now. A 
upper look. No one wants scavenger. What the hell? There we go. Oh, <laughs> that's a that's a D twenty. A D one hundred. I changed oh. it, but for whatever it, for whatever reason. Okay, yeah, that's way better than one. Okay. Yeah, I was about to be very upset. That was awful. <laughs> Anybody else want to roll for scavenger? All right, Derek, you get scavenger. Done. With a fifty-eight. Nice. Okay. All right, let's do warrior. Who wants to roll for warrior? <laughs> All right, Logan's got warrior. Uh, okay, so then who wants to roll for healer? Do it now. Well, is it just me and Long I've, left? I think it's just you and Long left. Long, would you rather be a healer or a seer? Uh... Probably seer. Okay. Seer. Okay. Let's do it that way. Perfect. Settled. All right. So then. You guys saved yourself from some weird shit from me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then, uh, healer Ashley, your second uh, primary attribute is instinct. Mm -hmm. And Derek. Yours as a seer is uh, also instinct. I'm sorry, long. Yours is Wait. also instinct. Sorry. So long. You only have one because your your fox is is instinct key attribute, and your seer is also instinct. Does that mean you get six points? No, it doesn't. Rip it, off. <laughs> they actually do that. They actually do that in Forbidden Lands. Like you actually can do that and get the six with that. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. And Derek, you were doing. Scavenger, right? Yeah. All right. So scavengers is wits. So what am I changing on my character sheet? Nothing yet. Just letting you know. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So, uh, did you? So since you're scavenger, did you, what? What? Uh, what animal did you want? Oh, I was going to be a chameleon. Okay. So reptile, and chameleon. All right. So then. Reptiles are wits, so you ha also have wits and wits. It's okay; it's no big deal. Um, you having two attributes, having having two key attributes, be the same thing. It doesn't matter. You can only ever max one of them anyway, so it's all good. Okay. Uh, long are you good staying as a fox seer, a foxy seer? Yeah, that's one. Okay. Ooh. All right. All right. So we've got uh, we've got your your animal type. We've got your role. Uh, so then next up is choose your name. Do you all have ideas about names? Yep. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. I thought I do. That. Okay. Ashley, what's your character's name going to be? Helena seven. Got it. Okay. Cause it's a cat. It's after an ancient Roman, etc. Yep. Perfect. All right. Uh, let's see. Melissa. So for uh, Badgers, it's a hockey player or a winter athlete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already know where this <laughs> I, is going. I already put it up in the Discord. So I was always a fan growing up of figure skating. So my character name is Hamill76. Okay. After Mark Hamill. That's no. the first thing I thought, too. <laughs> That's what I thought. Dorothy Hamill. Yeah, I know. Hamill76. Yep, that was the year she yep. won gold. That's Neil. smart. Uh, Logan, what's yours? Do you know? Um, yeah, hockey player named Curtis Joseph, whose nickname is Cujo. <laughs> okay. And his number is 31, so my name will be Cujo. Got it. That's so weird. That's my uncle's nickname. Cujo? <coughs> like, like the demon dog? Yeah, because his name is Kinji. When I was, uh, when I was younger, uh, I played a very bad prank on one of my, uh, one of my cousins. Uh, and I got this from a comedian, so this is not my original idea. But it was back when Beethoven was big, which okay. is like a big St. Bernard. And so uh, we 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 joked about like, hey, we're going to watch Beethoven. And I made them watch Cujo instead, uh, which is also basically a big St. <laughs> Bernard. And they were very upset. That's fucked up. And I was never allowed to babysit after that again. <laughs> so that was like my one and only time babysitting. <laughs> So that makes sense. All right. So I've got Ashley, your Ashley, your character's name was Helena, right? Helena Seven. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right, Long, you got one. Yeah, I'm gonna call myself McCloud Sixty Four. All right, 
Nice. So where is that coming from? Uh, that is actually uh, Fox McCloud. Oh my god! That's what I thought. So I thought. So I, I thought. knew it. Yeah, so, Nintendo sixty four. That's fine. Yeah, I like puns. Okay. Uh, Derek, you got something? Yeah, I'm gonna be a Tchaikovsky forty. Got it. I don't know how to spell that off the top. Yeah. Of my head. Do you have a nickname? T C H. Yeah, T C H A I K O V S K Y. What What was the number at the end? Forty from the year that Tchaikovsky was born. Perfect. Okay. I will add those to the uh, to the overlay for our our first real session, our first you know actual play session. Okay, so we've got those now. Now you all get to describe your appearance. Uh, so basically, in this game, there's no limit to like what you look like, uh, as long as it makes sense with your character. So like, if you had like you know, think about the animals themselves, whatever fur color you have, that kind of thing. If you have scars, that kind of stuff. Clothing, you can describe however you want. There are certain um, there are certain statted items in game, so things like uh, like like shoulder pads from like a football player or something like that will actually have armor to them. Uh, but otherwise, like you can you can describe like what your character is wearing, however you like. Um, so we can, yeah. All right, so let's get over to the character sheet now. Let's let's take a look at how this is gonna work. Um, all of you should have, you should see in the journal tab, you should see all of your the different character, uh, the character sheets, Ashley's character, mm -hmm. Derek's character, et cetera. All of you should have access. Uh, I'm going to just pull up a NPC ones really quick and walk you through. So when you, when you open it up, uh, you should be on the character sheet tab, uh, the bio and info stuff. You can, you can drop your. Like we'll drop your tokens. We'll when we get actual tokens for roll twenty and stuff, we'll we'll put them in there. But you can also put like things like you know what do you look like if you have any backstory stuff, all that kind of thing. Uh, but the character sheet tab is where we're at. There's at the sort of top middle of the sheet, it'll say character type, and there'll be mutant, animal, robot, and human. So you all want to make sure you're on the animal tab. There are slight differences between each one of them. Um, most of them are the same, but there's some slight differences between like mutants and, and animals and humans and animals. Okay. Now, the upper left, you can see the different attributes. So strength, agility, wits, and instinct. Now, this game doesn't have hit points. Okay. So if you think about it from like a D&D perspective, no hit points. If you think about it from like a Zweihander's perspective, we don't really have a damage track. Instead, when you take damage or in this case, the, the umbrella term is trauma. When you take trauma, you take it directly to your attributes. Uh, so the, there's four different kinds of trauma. Strength is when you take physical damage. Agility is when you get exhausted. Uh, wits is uh, when you get confused. And instinct is when you suffer doubt. And so you can suffer damage, you can suffer trauma in any one of those attributes. If at any point you get reduced to zero, you are broken and you need to recover and we'll cover we'll, we'll cover those types of things later but you need to recover to get up at a zero uh if you're ever reduced to zero strength however it's really dangerous because you just got to roll a critical injury and that's how you die like you can potentially die that way uh, there's a couple other ways you can die but that's the main the main way so you can see that there's two different uh there's like kind of two different entries there's strength and like your your current and then your total so you would put your total on the right and you would put your um your current on the left obviously you're all going to start at full now in this game to determine how many points that you have to distribute you have to decide on age uh there's three ages there's like there's youngster mature and then there's elders and so if you're following along on the pdf that i gave you it's it's 18 uh is where we're at um, youngsters, because they are younger and fresher or whatever, they have more natural ability. And so they have more attribute points to distribute. And so they have 15 to distribute. If you're mature, you're kind of middle of the road, you have 14. If you're an elder, uh, you're, bought, you're older, so you don't have as much physical raw skill, but you'll make up for it when we start talking about skill points later. So if you decide to be a youngster, 15. If you decide to be mature, it's 14. And if you decide to be an elder, it's 13. Okay. Um, now, when you distribute your, your points, 
all of the attributes have to have a minimum of two. So that's that's where the first eight points are going to go. After that, you can distribute them, you know, in whatever categories you want, but you can only ever take your key attribute to five. That's why key attributes were important. So for instance, Melissa, yours was strength and agility. You would only be able to take one of those two to five. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Long, yours, your only one is instinct. Derek, your only one is wits. So you would only be able to take those to five. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Anyone th have thoughts about young, old, middle-aged, et cetera? Um, oh, I'm going to be mature. I've been waiting for years for that, though. We should tell Justin. Justin, Logan's going to be mature. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's in chat. Is he? Hey. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Uh, okay. All right. So we got mature. All right. We got mature. Uh, who else has an idea? So I have a question. Sure. Um, I'm thinking of like having like a grizzled, because I'm a scavenger, I want to be like a grizzled old guy with like scruff and you know, tattered trench coat. So I was thinking like that's like, 55 ish would that be considered mature still like getting uh, to elderly but not quite there yeah i would probably put that at elderly um okay just because animals don't live all that long in the valley like there's a lot right. of dangers and stuff so yeah um, okay and what were the mature points elder? um elder is 13 gotcha you, you will make it up when we get to skill points don't worry um like mature is quite literally prime of life and so like grizzled scar doesn't sound like prime of life Right, right. Okay. Okay. An elderly, I think of like someone in a retirement home. <laughs> sure. I think of like people in their forties. Ah. Uh, Ashley, do you have a thought? Uh, I was thinking about being mature. Okay. I like how you put that. I was thinking about being mature, but I was like, <laughs> no, never mind. I don't want to be. I might be elderly. You know. I think I'm gonna be a youngster. I don't know. Okay. Um. Okay. Long. You have a thought. Yeah, I'll be a young star. There we go. Is there a place to put that? Uh, you can put it in your... I don't know, actually. That's a good point. I don't see anything on here. Um, just put it in one of the appearance ones in the middle for now. Uh, and you could probably... We'll end up putting it in like your bio info tab. Um, but, okay, so last was Melissa. Fading between mature and elderly. Yeah, I've been saying that about you for a long time. <laughs> That's <pretty good. laughs> it's okay. I think I'll go mature. Okay, all right. So we've got. I'm the only grandpa in the group. I, li I like it. It's a good spread. You got one youngin, three matures, and one elderly. All right. So if you went mature, you get 14 points to distribute right now. If you went youngster, long, you get you get 15, and Derek, you get 13. So go ahead and distribute the points now. Done. I can't make decisions that fast. <laughs> yeah, you can. So the, okay, so this is just among the four. Yes. Okay. And we want to put both values at the levels we're setting them at, right? The, yeah. The left value is what it's currently at, and right is what it should be. Yep. If it's not damaged. Right. Yep. So I can't take anything else to five. No. You, everything has to start at two. So your first eight points are automatically distributed. So two, oh, two, okay. two, and two. And after that, you have whatever your remainder is to distribute. And only your key attribute can be taken to five. Okay. This works out so perfectly. My wits is restored by sleep and I'm an old man. I'm just going to be sleeping all the time. Yeah, <laughs> it works. That's good. I like it. I also have a healer, healer pots. Like if she, if she can brew potions, uh, Helena. She yeah, they're going to yeah. be drinks. Yeah, you know, you'd be we're going to get good, tipsy. Good. <laughs> mint juleps. There's two different I'm things. There's, Just there's brew juice. potions. <laughs> and one of one of the powers uh, I think you can choose from is Moonshiner, uh, which I think is fantastic. <laughs> you need Moonshiner. to have a banjo if you're a Moonshiner. Oh, for sure. That's. I haven't decided on an accent yet. So a we'll Victorian see. dress <laughs> with a, ban a banjo? Okay. That'd be real weird. Okay. Um, <laughs> Who sounds like a Jewish grandma? <laughs> so recovering strength is eating food. Recovering agility is... Uh, Water? Yeah. Am I echoing? I feel like I'm echoing. 
Uh, recovering agility is drinking water. Uh, recovering wits is uh, is sleep, and then recovering instinct changes depending upon which character you pick. Uh, so let's see. I'm trying to remember. I honestly don't remember what. Oh God! What do I have to do as a cat? Uh, you have to lick yourself. Cough up fur balls. <laughs> yeah. You have to quite literally give yourself a bath. Um. Dogs have to kind of just hang out with their, you know, other dogs and play and stuff like that. Um, I can't remember what reptiles I'll do. I'll have to look it up for you. I can't remember reptiles. I can't remember badgers. Shed my skin. Okay. Everyone this has. Gross like, and I like it. I hope that's it. Everyone got, <laughs> everyone got that figured out. Get yes. the points distributed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just for primary, right? Just for key attributes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now we go into skill points, right? So every skill in game is tied to one of the attributes. So if you look underneath like two, two, two boxes down in the character sheet, you can see a list of skills. So it'll say like endure, that's a skill and that's tied to strength force, another skill tied to strength sneak, another skill tied to agility, comprehend tied to wits, etc. There's also a blank box at the bottom where you need to type in your special skill based upon your role. Um, so scavenger type in scavenge uh seer type in scry warrior type in measure enemy hunter type in hunt and healer type in brew potions you're a wizard harry you just put the attribute that's associated with it uh yeah that's fine when we roll them we're gonna have to do custom rolls for those uh but we'll worry about that later. I'll talk about the dice and stuff later once everything once we actually have your character sheets filled out, I can we can practice some roles and I can show you what they mean. So the special skill is related to your key attribute? Yeah. Okay. The key attribute from the role specifically. Right. Okay, so in terms of how many points you have is again, it's based upon uh your your age. And so this is sort of like inverted. Youngsters, they have better attributes but they don't have as many skill points to distribute so long you only have eight to distribute uh the mature people you have 10 uh elder you have 12 now skills go from zero to five if there's nothing in it it's a zero uh you can always roll a skill check even if you have zero skill points in it with the exception of your of your roll skill, like your scavenge or your hunt or your, or your scry. So you're going to want to put a point in there. Um, at least, um, you cannot, uh, the maximum starting level for any skill is three and you have, so like you can't go above three to start. And again, you have to have one skill point in your specialist skill. Other than that, you can distribute them however you want. Uh, going through what they do endure is like the elements and stuff like that. Um, Force is a kind of physical exertion. Uh, so if you're trying to like break open a door or something like that, you're talking about force. Uh, fight is close combat attacks, melee. Uh, sneak is obvious what it is. Move is acrobatics in some cases, like trying to climb or balance. But also when you're in combat, when you're like an actual conflict situation and you're trying to flee, it's like a move role as well. And there's a couple other instances where you might use uh, move as well. Shoot is ranged attacks. Uh, scout is kind of self-explanatory in terms of his name, but it's also the thing that conflicts most with uh, with sneak. So, like, there are certain times when you'll roll like contested checks and stuff like that, and so scout and sneak run against one another. Uh, comprehend, as I mentioned before, is when you're trying to figure out how to use or understand anything of the old world, like technology and stuff like that, when you find artifacts. And artifacts could very well just be like an air mattress, and like you're trying to figure that out. Um, no nature is just understanding something about the valley. So if, if for instance, you, you, you encounter some sort of weird mutated monster in the woods that you have to fight, and you want to try to know something about them, you can roll a no nature check on them. It's different from the the enemy thing that warriors get. There's other types of information, but you can get stuff like that. Uh, sense of motion is conflicting with dominate. Sense of motion is basically just trying to like to sniff, like quite literally, like kind of sniff and get the scent of um, 
whoever you're talking to, like what their basic uh, emotion is towards you, like how are they feeling right now? And if you do really well, you can actually learn some other bits and information too. Uh, dominate is, is actually important. It would be good if at least one of you probably was halfway decent at dominate uh, because in this game, um, you're all animals. And so animals don't do like the bargaining and persuading and stuff like that. Like humans do, they dominate. Like it's like two dogs. Like it's like, it's like the way Ripley dominated, uh, uh, your dog when she, when he came over Odin <laughs> that one time, she just kept trying to ride him. Like he was a horse. Um, yeah. it just sort of, and that's how you do it. And, and there's going to be a lot of dominate roles throughout the campaign. So making sure at least one of you was halfway decent in it wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah. Heal is self-explanatory. It heals you, like it means it lets you recover trauma, like damage. But it also, if you're ever broken and you're down to zero and you need to like be saved, like there are times when you get critical injuries where you are literally on the verge of death if somebody doesn't heal you. That's what heal is for. Uh, then you all know your individual skills. Um, so youngster gets eight, mature gets ten, elder gets twelve. You all might want to talk it out a little bit if you want, if you, if you're looking for some sort of even, you don't have to have an evil, even distri distribution, but like, if you're thinking about like what your character might be good at, the others talk it out amongst yourselves. Uh, what's not going to be my strong point. That's okay. I kind of, I'm just kind of modeling mine out. I have like a three in comprehend and a two in scout. And then a three in scavenge, which are all wits based, but scavenge is my special ability. Um, my primary is definitely going to be fight, just because I'm the warrior class. So I figure I'm going to put three in there automatically. Mm -hmm. Is anyone thinking of being ranged at all? I was cons I'm I'm kind of planning on it, but I'm not okay. going to go super into it. Roles. Uh, the different roles have starting gear which isn't to say you're not going to be able to find other gear or trade for other gear. Uh, the classes that can start with a ranged weapon, uh, Scavenger can choose a sling if they want it. Um, Seer can't. Uh, a warrior? No, they're, they're all about crazy melee weapons. Hunter can. Uh, they can get a sling or a bow. And Healer can get a sling as well. That's starting, starting items. Hmm. Melissa, what are you thinking? I know you're a hunter, so. Yeah, I was doing a bit of a distribution, basically across strength and agility stuff. Okay. So I don't really have anything in wits and instinct, but I've got kind of a low, like ones and twos, pretty much across all of the kind of strength and agility, I think. That's, I think what I'm looking at, and then obviously hunt. Uh, is anyone going to be like a sneaky, sneaky type? That's going to be a little bit more me because I'm thinking about going a little more of the um, like trapper tracker type. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, who's going to be the kind of like the no, like the, the knowledge person, like the one who's going to be able to like figure out artifacts or who's going to be who or might know and or is going to be like, I know a lot about this place, you know? So that's what I was thinking of doing. Uh, like right now I've got like a two in scout, a three in comprehend. I was going to try to do a two in nature. I just going to take a point away from somewhere else. It might be, it might be shoot. So I won't have any melee or shooting ability, which you could bite me in the ass. Um, oh. But yeah, I was building toward wits for sure with like agility as being my secondary. That makes sense a little bit because you're elderly. You probably know a little, you've seen more things than they have. So it kind of fits. Okay. You've seen some shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've seen things that you people wouldn't believe. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, have you all figured out generally where you're distributing things? Yeah. I have 12, right? As mature. You were mature? Uh, mature is 10. 10. Mature. 10 for mature. Yeah, I, I'm the only one that gets 12 because I'm an old man. And again, you need one in your, in your special skill. Like the one that you get from your role. And then you can go a maximum of three. So that one takes from our pool? Yes. Okay. So who's going to be our dominant person? I have two in dominant right now. 
I can take some out or put more in if we need to, but I have two so far. No, Ashley, you've got heal. Yeah, I have two in heal right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right now I'm mostly instinct with the balance between strength and agility <coughs> as secondary. I have some basic agility, like one in each one. I have one in comprehend, two in dominate, two in heal, and then two in group potion. Okay. That sounds like a decent. You said spread. you had. You sound like you. Had, or sorry, you said you had two in comprehend, Ashley. Yeah. Or I no, comprehend. I have just one. Oh. Okay. Dominate. I have two, and heal. I have two. Gotcha. Because you're in, you're an instinct based class, right? I uh, have agility, but because I'm a healer, I have instinct. Right. Yeah, but you, you're you, gonna heal them, but you're gonna dominate them along the way. Yeah. <laughs> so just so just to so just to give you a preview of this also might impact your decision making here. When you roll checks in this game, you I mentioned before that you do a, you do a, a dice pool, and it, they're uh -huh. all they're all d sixes, and there's three different kinds of dice that you could potentially have in a check. There's what are called base dice, uh, which are you get a number of those equal to the attribute. That your that uh, that the skill is in. So let's say we're doing a uh, a sneak test, okay? So that means you're going to get the amount of you're going to get amount of base dice equal to your agility stat, and then you also get skill dice, and you get an amount of those equal to the skill rank you have in that particular uh, in that particular skill. So for instance, I'm going to roll right now. Um, an example role, and I'll kind of break down what this means. So it's just an NPC you guys will meet pretty quickly. It's no big deal. All right, so you see the you see the results. So what I just did is I did a sneak agility test. You can see that there's four green dice, there's uh, four yellow dice, and there's one black dice. The green dice are skill dice. Uh, the little fallout symbols, those are sixes, basically. And those are successes. So in this game, a six is a success. Unless you're doing an opposing roll, nothing cancels that out. So it's okay. So you roll a six, it's a success. For every six beyond that that you roll, you get to perform a stunt. So there's like little extra bits of information that you might learn if you're doing a knowledge check or if you're doing damage, you could do potentially extra damage, that kind of thing. Now... The yellow dice are your attribute dice. These, there's, let me, let me, Ashley actually did a, leave, leave Ashley's up for a second because Ashley's, you can see that she's got two different dice that have two different symbols on it. One of them is that, that fallout symbol that, that's a, that's a success. That's the one on the left. That's, that's a six. Then there's the rad symbol, which is the one on the right. That's a one. When you roll a one on the yellow dice, that's bad. Uh, or, or it has the potential to be bad. Uh, the black dice are gear dice. So if you have items or equipment that might help you in a specific situation, you also get to roll gear dice. Uh, so if you're hitting somebody with like a sledgehammer, for instance, you'll have gear dice that goes into that roll. You're always, all you need to do is roll one six to be successful. So the more dice you have in your pool, the more likely you are to be successful. But then every additional six you get on top of it is going to add extra stuff. Like you're gonna get you're gonna get to do stunts, uh, and every skill has different types of stunts that you can gain for it, and they're all beneficial in some way. Now, this game also allows you to do what's called pushing. So let's so like if you if you look at what you rolled and you're like, well, I don't really like what I rolled, or you didn't get a success in it, you can push. That's what that blue, uh, the blue button on the bottom left is. What this is gonna do when you click on it, it'll re-roll all of the dice that weren't ones or sixes. Now, when you choose to do that, however, there's the potential then to take trauma. Uh, and there's also going, the, there's also the potential to gain feral points. We'll talk about that later. So pushing, it's a, it's sort of a, it's a, it's quite literally push your luck. Like you're, you're risking it. You're going to pass it, but it might take something out of you. So if I go ahead and like, if we, I'm going to go ahead and push Ashley. Oh, sorry. I'm going to push mine. There we go. Um, and so what I did is it re-rolled all of my, um, all, all of the dice that weren't sixes or, or ones. Now you'll notice that 
the results are on the left. It says I got in total, I got three rads, which are good. Okay. So three successes. I got one, or excuse me, three fallouts. That's good. One rad yellow. That's bad. And then I didn't get any exploding and that's good as well. So what this means is that I succeeded on my test. I have two extra successes that I can then spend on stunts that add extra bonuses to my, to my success. However, because I rolled a one, I now have to take trauma in whatever stat was being tested. So because I was testing agility, for instance, I'm going to take one point of agility damage. I'm going to take one point of fatigue. So then I go back to my character sheet and I drop my agility down one. Does that make sense? I'm also going to gain a ferro point, but I'll talk about that in a minute. So when you're allocating your skill points, keep that in mind. So higher higher dice pools give you more opportunity to get sixes. It also gives you more opportunity to get ones. The green dice, your skill dice, don't hurt you if you roll a one. The yellow dice do have the potential to hurt you if you roll ones. And the black dice, if you roll ones, it'll actually look like... You can only push once, but... It's not built that way. I'm trying to show you what it looks like. We'll get there eventually. I'm looking for a one. Unbelievable. There we go. <laughs> that didn't work. So anyway, you'll see an explosion. There's like the one symbol on the gear. Black dice is an exploding symbol. That has the potential to damage your uh, your weapon or whatever item you're using. And so rolling ones on the black dice and on the yellow dice are bad. Rolling ones on the, on the, on the greens aren't bad. So high skill... High skill numbers are great because you get a bunch of dice to roll sixes, but you're not in danger of rolling ones. Does that make sense? So that might yeah. that might kind of like inform or adjust how you go ahead and allocate some of your um, some of your points. Right. So like essentially, if I was to do like a comprehend check, I'd have eight dice total because I've got a five in wits plus the three in comprehend. Correct. So yeah. So five is your base. So five yep. wits. So you would roll five um, five yellow dice. And then if you have three skill, you would roll three green. You can roll it now if you want. Just go ahead and roll it. And there's a little dice next to next to your, your skill box. There's always going to be a pop-up for gear. It's like you have to manually enter gear whenever the pop-up comes. If Unless you have something, just leave it at zero and hit OK. Did you find it, Derek? Yeah, I'm clicking it, but it's not doing anything. Uh, look to I see because I look to see out the window. Yeah, look to see if there's a pop up window in the main screen for roll twenty that's asking for a gear dice. Let's see it. There's a, probably going to be a gear dice pop up window. Yeah. Okay. Just just hit zero and then roll. Cool. There we go. All right. So with your roll, then uh, Logan, you had one success, the green on the left, one bad, uh, and then you had and you're fine. Now. The ones do not hurt you on the first roll. They only hurt you if you push the roll. Okay. So more dice is good. <laughs> like it's really that simple. More dice is good because it just gives you more opportunity to succeed without having to push. If you push, you run the risk of doing things, uh, of hurting yourself. But also when you push, you, you also are gaining feral points. Feral points are what you use you spend feral points to actually use your animal powers, like your special powers. So there is, to some degree, you do want to occasionally push because you do want to kind of get some feral points here and there so that you have those powers to use. So anyway, that's how skill dice work. And that's how that's how that works. And so think about that as you're allocating your, your points. I'll give you a minute or so on that. I'm going to... I noticed that I forgot to put our little. So is everyone okay with me not having any points and shoot or fight or really anything like that? Looks like I'm going to be pretty hardcore support, at least for my large dice pool. Sorry about that. It seems, it seems like we have, I think, yeah, it seems like our biggest fighters will be um, Melissa and uh, Logan. Is your hunter I just have, warrior? I just have one in each. As a hunter, gotcha. you have one um, in melee and one in shoot. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty heavy into the strength category. I also took my points out of uh, 
dominate because Ashley had two and I didn't want to double dip. So I put like one incense emotion. But what if we split the party? Which That's happens fine. sometimes. Never. You never sleep in different places. Do uh, different things. I mean, you're all from different habitats. You are a part of the same resistance cell, but you are in different habitats. Okay. Um, I kind of switched. I don't know if this is going to change your elbow again. Um, I took one out of dominate, so I can have another one and shoot. All right, just remember that shoot also has like an ammunition requirement as well. You start with some, but there's all those things that come as well. So like you actually mm. have to keep track of your ammo. All right. All righty then. I'm putting the two back into dominate. All right. Long, are you set? Yeah. Derek, are you set? Yeah, I believe so. Melissa, are you set? Yeah, I'm set. All right. Ashley? Yes. <laughs> Logan? Can't guarantee I won't tinker, but yeah. I am generally set. We'll see how far we get tonight. If we actually start playing at all before we leave, uh, then you're tinkering. No, tinkering. no. but if we it's don't get locked. that far, it's, cheating. it's locked in. Uh, okay. All right. So then, so we've got that done. So we've got skills, we've got attributes, we've got uh, all that kind of stuff. Now you get to choose a talent. Um, you're going to want to look at your individual, uh, if you bring up your PDFs, look at your individual uh, role sections. They start on page 29, tw or 28 is the healer page, 30 is the hunter page. 32 is the warrior page, 34 the seer page, and 36 scavenger. Um, you'll see there's all a bunch of stuff here. Like it, it gives you some suggestions on like what your character like could look like. So healers are probably going to have some sort of medical equipment or whatever, you know. Um, uh, but they also have a section for talents. And there are three starting talents. You get to choose one from these three. Um, these are your these are your like your role specific talents. And so nobody else can get those. Uh, there's other talents in game that are general talents. As you guys accrue XP, your you'll be able to spend that XP on increasing your skills and also on getting new talents. And you can pull talents either from when you start buying them later on in the game, you'll be able to buy skill, buy talents from both your um, your role specific list, but also from your um, from the general list as well. So, looking at these kind of one at a time. So let me pull them up. You can look at them as well. The actual talents are on page fifty five. So healer, Ashley, I'm going to start with you because <laughs> it's got my favorite talent in the whole game, which is what moonshiner moonshiner. Oh, gosh. I had I had a uh, not a roommate, but a neighbor in my college dorm my freshman year whose family made moonshine in the middle of oh, like, in the middle of nowhere in Florida. It was it was amazing. And we went and visited one weekend and we had moonshine. And. I've never had, don't remember I've, the weekend. I've never had moonshine again. <laughs> it's dangerous. I saw my life flash before my eyes. Uh, okay, so there's Moonshiner. That's one of the talents you could take. Uh, you have mastered the art of distilling potent alcohol from plants. A few hours of work in a successful role of brew potion creates 1d6 doses of alcohol. Alcohol can be drunk or used as fuel. So you can use it to like to, to start up an engine or something like that or a generator. But alcohol can also be used to temporarily heal uh, doubt and damage. Temporarily, though. Okay. There's also surgeon. Surgeon, uh, you have learned the art of stopping bleeding and treating severe injuries. Your role is modified by plus two. What modified means is it means it gives you extra dice. Like you get extra skill dice. Uh, nice. So you would get plus two dice to your heals. When you roll to heal someone who is broken by damage. So if long falls down uh, and he takes his strength is reduced to zero and you try to heal someone, you try to heal him because he's broken, you get plus two on that heal. What that means is that for every success you get, that's how many that's how many points of strength you heal for him. And so having extra dice obviously is helpful. 
And then there's then there's one that I was trying to encourage Melissa to take if she was going to go healer, and it's therapist. Uh, you read others like an open book, and you have a natural ability to make them open up to you. Uh, your roll is modified by plus two uh, when you roll to heal somebody who is broken by confusion or doubt, but not by damage. So surgeon, it's the same thing. Surgeon gets damage. Uh, yeah. Therapist gets doubt or confusion. So those are the three things that you get to choose from. So then hopefully people are reading ahead, but like, yeah, uh, I already got mine. Okay. Uh, Melissa, did you pick yours? Yeah, I'm going to do Trapper. Okay. So you're going to do Trapper. So you want to tell people what that does? Uh, so you have mastered the art of setting traps and snares. Um, so you roll hunt to set a trap and choose if it should inflict trauma or ensnare its victim. Um, setting a trap takes a few minutes. If the victim fall, if the victim fails um, a roll, uh, he suffers damage equal to the number of successes that I roll for a damaging trap, or um, can become ensnared. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, Logan, you said you found yours. You know what you're, you're doing. Yeah, my talent is going to be weapon master, and I'm going to be specializing in unarmed combat which basically just means that i'm getting plus one damage when using no weapons nice ah, are you making a monk nice i'm a badger man i got built-in weapons in my hands okay <laughs> are they are they like like bones or metal plates <laughs> that come out <laughs> all right just curious they're made out of keratin you're a wolverine <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh all right seer uh long did you look at them yeah, I think I'll go with sudden visions. So I could pretty much scry at any point and I can't scry again until that vision is passed. Right. So pretty much. So Jeff's just gonna fuck you over and you're gonna scry one time and then it's never <laughs> yeah, yeah, at vision. the end of the session. Long, right, Long Long's gonna forget to do it. He's gonna do it one time <laughs> and then we'll have like two weeks between sessions at some point, and then he'll be like, I forgot how to do these things. Uh okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Do you see that picture of that totem, that scrap totem? Oh, yeah, it's so it's terrifying. I love it. It's awesome. I think it's beautiful. I want one in my backyard. Uh, speaking Wait, of... it says it says that the vision takes hold of you and renders you unable to do anything else. Yeah. So while I'm having a vision, I can't do anything until. So it's I done. just have to carry you around with <laughs> brand from. <laughs> Pretty much. Game yeah. of Thrones. You're just like <laughs> the three eyed raven. All right. <laughs> So normally when you're scrying, you have to do a ritual, which takes like a couple hours to do. Usually requires like some sort of some sort of plants and drugs or like a sweat tent or uh. something. Uh, so what he's able to do is he's able to do it without ritual, without doing the ritual. And that's why it's a little bit more difficult, but gotcha. it doesn't take up that time. Um, all right. So scavenger, Derek, did you look at did you look at the ones? Yeah, mine works perfectly. I want to be a scrounger. Okay. You know how to pack stuff so it doesn't take much space and your pack becomes easy to carry, which works because I'm thinking of my character having a big trench coat full of a lot of pockets and his tail is <laughs> going to hold on to a little wagon handle. And he's going to pull a wagon behind him for the bigger things that don't fit in the trench coat. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, yeah, because one of the things you have to do is describe like what your horde looks like. So a little wagon's perfect. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm so excited. Uh, did you max wits? I did. Yeah, so that means that you're so so carrying capacity is normally two times your strength, but for you it's wits instead, so it's two times your wits. So you you basically yeah. have you can carry 10, 10 items. We'll talk about encumbrance later, but like when we get cool. there. Okay, Ashley, we're going to go back. Did you figure out what you want? Moonshiner. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> he gave in. I'll, I'll carry a banjo for you. <laughs> Great. It's useful. You're going to be just making you could be making stuff all the time. Okay constantly drunk next (laughs) all right the next i'm here to have a good time i think i think that you should just i still think the mint the mint juleps one is you should just be walking around handing like mint juleps and and all sorts of different stuff (laughs) that'd be great just handing out like here you go sweetheart (laughs) just (laughs) drink two of these and call me in the morning Uh, there's your voice i got your voice there no, just I a, don't think I can do that. Just one. a bunch of Rebecca nurses all the way. Here you go, sweetheart. Hey, no, Jeff. That, that hurts. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, okay. So, what are we on next? We're doing animal powers next. Okay, so animal powers, you get two to start the game. Um, over the course of the game, you can get a maximum of four. And the way you get them is really fascinating. 
So if you notice in your character sheet, there's uh, so basically there's these things called feral points. I, I think they're called. I'm not sure if they change them. Yeah. If you look on the right hand side of your character sheet, you'll see there's feral points, right? You can only ever have up to 10. All right. But mm. if you get if you if like you get to 10, like that's you got to be careful, because at a certain point, what's going to happen is, is if you get so feral, uh, like when you try to roll to use your animal powers and stuff like that. You have to roll when you let me start again. When you use an animal power, you have to roll as many dice as you have feral points. Let's say you have six feral points when you choose to do something. Uh, use one of your pow powers that takes like two to do. You still have to roll six dice. And if any of those comes up a one, you basically lose control of your character. Um, and like the, 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 the yeah, you go full feral. And what that means is that you roll a D6 on this table. And depending on what you roll, it kind of determines what happens. And one of those, if you roll a one on that table, you like you literally run out into the wilderness by yourself <laughs> for like a handful of hours and you're going crazy out there. But eventually you recover, possibly, unless you just want to get rid of your character. But you're, you recover and you've also learned a new animal power during that like feral spree that you're on, which is really, really fun. It's like a vision quest. Kind of, but like a very feral and strange one. Um, okay, so the the powers that you can choose from are determined by the animal type that you have. So not every animal gets access to the same things. Uh, so page sixty three. Thank you very much. I was just turning to that now. So um, there's a little chart on page sixty three that has a list of the different animal powers and what animal types get to them. There's three kinds of animal powers. Uh, there's ones that you just activate to use. And when you're in combat, that takes an action. Uh, there's reactive. Uh, so you use them based upon whenever specific situations occur that, that allows you to use them. And then there's enhancing powers, which are basically uh, basically passives or writers on certain other uh, on certain other things that you can do. Um, so at the start, you're allowed to pick two animal powers. Uh, that you have access to. So there's a bunch of these to look at. Uh, some of them are pretty kind of obvious, um, but they, again, you'll be able to get them over time, but that means you have to be like pushing, you know, your feral and getting your feral up and using your animal powers a lot. So there's things like amphibian, which allows you to hold your breath really long and sneak really well in water. Uh, antlers, which... It doesn't matter that none of you are, are, are a moose. It's fine. You can still do it. Uh, but I think I think it's only actually for moose. Never mind. I was wrong. I lied. It's only for moose. Uh, burr, it's okay. I scavenged. Okay. Sorry, I was going to make a dumb joke. <laughs> You're going to wear one of those like holiday reindeer things? Uh, so, Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So there's like burrower, which again, you can kind of determine what that might mean. Climber, fast reflexes, etc. As you're looking through, if you see an E, it means it's enhancement. If you see R, it's reactive. Uh, if there's nothing there, it's just normal thing that you have to trigger. Uh, so has anyone skipped ahead and started looking at these? Yeah, can you have like two of the same kind or how does that work? What do you mean two of the same kind? Like E or R, doesn't matter. Yeah, you can have, yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. I know which ones I want, so I just mark them down, right? Yeah. And then you can tell us which one you're doing, giving the rest of them time to kind of look at them. So which which ones are you going for, Derek? So uh, because I'm a reptile, I'm going to use tail for one of them because that just goes well. Dragging my little wagon behind me and helps with balance and <laughs> you, all that. Are you going to drag? You're dragging it with your tail. Your yeah. Head? So like in one so, hand, I'm going to have a cane. My tail's going to hold the wagon, and the other hand's going to be free. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I like um, it. And then my second one, even though I'm an old man, I've got fast reflexes since sure. agility is my secondary. Okay. So fast reflexes is enhancing. So yeah. basically that's for initiative and combat. So you yep. get to, yeah, perfect. Which is good since I can't fight, I can run away faster. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, anybody else know which ones they're going for? I'm ready to go. Okay, Melissa, go ahead. Uh, so I am continuing with the hunter. So I'm doing hunter instincts. Okay. And Tell I'm also- that. What does hunter uh, instincts do? Uh, that Sorry, is. I got to scroll back down again. Uh, that's so hunter in, it's enhancing, yeah. It's enhancing. You have strong instincts to hunt and kill your prey. You can spend one FP to choose your prey with insight. When you attack, you can spend FP to get a bonus to your first attack. You get plus one to fight or shoot. Mm -hmm. You can only have one prey at a time. Cool. And then the second one that I'm doing is small. 
you are short, send and agile. You can activate this power when an enemy succeeds in a roll of fight or shoot against you. Okay. For every FP you spend, neutralizes one of the enemy's um, failures. Uh, that's a success. Is it okay? It looked like a failure symbol. But... No, one of the enemy's successes. You okay. you wouldn't really want to neutralize one of their failures. I, well, that's why I was confused. Yeah. I got yeah. the yeah the symbol confused me. I feel like you're kind of turning more into a ferret, right? Right? Long, you feeling a little nostalgia for your ferret? <laughs> right. Uh, oh, Gretel. Poor Gretel. In our Spyhander campaign, uh, one of Long's characters had a pet ferret that he got possibly killed. Uh, okay. Who else? Uh, Logan, you ready? Yeah, I have a point in Predator right now, okay. which basically just lets me, when I'm fighting unarmed, which is what I'm specializing in, I can spend my FP to uh, gain a damage, and I can spend as many FP as I want. Nice. Awesome. And then I was thinking of running uh, Hunter Instincts as well. Okay. Since we're both of the Badger family. Yeah. Kind of limited. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, all of it, like, you just seem, yeah, you're definitely, like, itemizing towards what you're doing, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, who's who still has to go? Ashley. Me. Okay. What do you got? I'm gonna be fleet-footed. Okay. Uh, it's enhancing. I'm gonna run like the wind when I run on all fours. Okay. By spending one F uh, feral point, you can double your movement during one turn. Every maneuver spent on movement counts as two. Perfect. I can also go directly from long distance to arm's length in one turn, or go directly from short to arm's length. Nice. So. Um... So basically, you, you your your movements enhanced. So this game, we're going to use some combat maps, but we're also going to use the because like there's rules for that in game. There's variants for combat maps, but it also has like abstracted movement. Uh, and so the different tiers are arm's length, which is where you do melee attacks, uh, so that you're right next to somebody. Uh, there's near, which is a couple steps away. If you have like a spear, like a reach weapon, you can you can do melee attacks, but otherwise it's usually a range attack, like you're throwing something at them. There's short, which is twenty within about twenty or thirty yards. Uh, then there's long, which is like a football field or two, and then there's like super crazy distant, which is anywhere as far as the eye can see. Um, and in combat, distance distant is really not going to come into play. Long might come into play from time to time, not that long, other long. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, all the other ones definitely will will, will come into play. Um, and I got to double check to see, cause this might actually let you double your movement. So normally everyone can move. I think it's 10 yards, uh, in combat. This might actually give you 20 yard movement. I'll double check for you before we, before next, next game. Okay. So we're good on powers. Everyone's gone and done powers. Yep. All right. My other one is tail, by the way. Oh, sorry. My bad. Ah, oh, we're tail twinsies. Okay, cool. Yeah. Except yours is all gross and scaled and hers is like fluffy and stuff. Yeah, I think I'll do <laughs> furry and warning call. Oh, sorry, Lon. I totally forgot about you. Yeah, so furry gives me a thick coat that'll help me resist against cold effects and blunt and edge damage. Okay. And warning calls, I can just emit a warning call. Yeah, uh, I was gonna pick furry, but I can't as a cat. Which is we great. heard from a mile away. Mm -hmm. Animal mutants can hear the nuisance of it, so it could be like a danger call, a come here call, sort of like what it's gonna be. Right. It's pretty useful. You also can inflict uh, doubt. So doubt is a type of damage. So cool. remember, or type of trauma. There's four different kinds of trauma. There's physical damage, which is strength. There's fatigue, which is agility. There's confusion, which is wits. And then there's doubt, which is instinct. So you're actually able to potentially do doubt damage to them. And you can break, you can break somebody, not just by strength, but by other ways. Um, usually if you break, if you, if you get them to broken by using doubt, often that means like, in dominant and like sort of dominate situations, they'll just sort of do whatever you say. They're like, whatever. Mm. They're just resigned to just, okay, fine. Whatever you say, yes, sir. That kind of thing. I have a quick question. Yeah, man. I'm not quite sure how combat works yet in this game, but is there like a, like a sneak attack? Do you get like bonuses? If there you... are sneak attacks and ambush. Yes. Okay. Uh, there's so... not opportunity attacks though. So if you're familiar with like, you know, D&D &D or Spy Anderson yeah. like that, there's no opportunity attacks. Okay. So for one of the, uh, the powers I can get as a burrower. Would I be able to use that to perform like a sneak attack or an ambush? Uh, so let me take a look at burrower really quickly. Just says I can 
uh, burrow through the ground. As long as it's soft, I can burrow 30 feet per FP. I can um, use it to escape conflicts. Usually the ambush and the sneak attack stuff is like the first round of combat. So it's like you're you're starting. So like if you were to try to use it later, I don't know. I have to double check uh, to see whether or not that actually works. Uh, but usually like when you're uh, when you're kind of assigning like when the fight's breaking out, if like, you know, if, if you're doing sneak tests or something like that, and you're you're beating out their their scout tests, then you basically can can do a sneak attack, or you can do a um, and you get like extra sort of extra dice to it to your roll. Is basically what goes on. Uh, I'm trying to actually find it for you right now. Uh, so ambushes and sneak attacks. So if you attack in a way that the GM deems likely to surprise your enemy, so if you guys manage to scout people out and you like surround them and you fight them. You get to add plus two to your initiative roll. Then there's sneak attack. So when you stalk someone and your attack catches them unawares, it's called a sneak attack. So you you have to roll opposing sneak and scout rolls, but you get a modifier according to how close you are. Being burrowed might give you a circumstantial modifier. Um, and then you have to get within arm's length. Then there's ambush, which is a special kind of sneak attack. That's when you lie in wait. So let's say like you're hiding in bush in bushes while you see like a couple people like walking along on the road and you want to like jump out. That gives you some extra modifications as well. So I'm gonna say your burrow thing would probably help with ambush in the beginning. Um, sneak attack, possibly depending upon how it's played out. Uh, but I don't know if it's something that I'm not sure if it's gonna be similar to like a D and D rogue where you're just like constantly getting extra sneak attack damage. If that's yeah. what you're thinking. I'm I'm just gonna swap out hunter's instincts for burrow just because I like the way the possibilities of cool. that it could play out. So awesome. All right. Uh, are we good on animal powers? Yeah, any yeah. any more questions on that? Are we good. No. Nope. I think we're set. Let's move on to rank. Uh, so like I said before. Uh, rank is partially determined by your role, uh, because what role you play actually can sort of dictate it. So, um, page 21, I got it, but also your age. Thank you though. Uh, so let's see. So for, I would be rank five. It's certainly possible. Uh, so let's just double check these. So basically if you're a youngster, you start at two. If you're mature, you start at four. If you're an elder, you start at six, but then your role modifies it. So who's the seer? Yeah, me. Uh, you are young, right? Yeah. So being young, you're two. A seer gets you plus three, so you have rank five. Okay. All right. We've uh, got three fibers. Who's else? I'm, I'm six. Yeah. So elderly Derek, you get you start at six, but you're a scavenger, which is minus one. So that puts you back down to five. Yep. And then let's see, Melissa, you are a hunter, which is just zero, uh, but mm -hmm. you're mature. I'm four. Bring you're it four. up to her. Uh, Logan, you're mature, so you start at four, and you're a warrior plus two, so you're six, like you said. And then Ashley, you're mature, you start at four, you're a healer, you get plus one, so you're five. Yep. Okay, perfect. This is going to, so the way rank comes into play is with dominance checks. So when you try to dominate somebody else, uh, part of the difficulty is, is affected by ranks. There's a couple different things that affect the difficulty um, of a dominate check, but one of those is rank. If you try to dominate somebody who's higher rank than you, then uh, you get- Higher is in higher value? Yeah, higher than ever. Like literally the higher the number. Okay. Yeah, so the, the bigger the number, the better. Um, so if you try to dominate somebody who's got a higher rank than you, then you're going to get some negative modifiers, meaning some of your dice that you would normally roll for the dominate check are taken away. If you try to dominate somebody who's got a lower rank than you, meaning a smaller number, then you're going to be able to actually get a positive modifier and you add dice to your pool. So that's where rank comes into play. You also have the ability, the, these aren't static. So these, these are dynamic. They go up and down depending upon what you do in the game. Uh, so every session, like what we, what we do at the end of each session, we do like kind of a breakdown based upon like, did you do this? Did you do this? Did you do this? And based upon your actions, it's possible that you can go up. Like if you dominate 
a higher ranked individual and were successful at it, then you likely will gain rank. And so that's kind of how that works. Okay. Uh, so any questions on that? We good? No. Awesome. Now we get to some fun stuff. Uh, I'm really excited about this one. We have to define your relationships to the other player characters into various NPCs. So this is where we're going to get into like a little bit of world building. If you scroll down on your uh, character sheet to the bottom, you will see a relationships section. You're going to, I've already, I already should have added extra PC lines for you. So you should see four PC lines. Does everyone see that? Underneath relationships, it should say PC. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then you should see, I hate, uh, I need to protect and my big dream. Do you see that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Indeed. So then on the right side, of the PC lines, you'll see that there are checkboxes and they say buddy. You can only ever have one buddy. Buddy can change. Okay. Now, when you, when we're breaking, like when we're finishing a session and we're trying to allocate XP, there's a few things that you get XP for. So one of those is like helping out or, uh, or, actively protecting the npc that you need to protect one of them is like actively undercutting the rival that you hate one of them is taking a risk and trying to trying to do something that develops your big dream and so there's things like that so these actually do either they're they're they're, role, they're kind of role play signals they are also ways for you to gain xp so like there is somewhat of a mechanical benefit if you look at your role pages it gives you some Things you can choose from if you want, but you don't have to. So like I'm looking at healer, for instance, for your relationships to PCs, you're really just putting one sentence in per person, right? And so per PC is how you kind of think about them. And so some of the options from healer are always ends up in trouble. So we'll say like Longley always ends up in trouble and you always have to save them. That's your relationship to the other PC. Uh, another one is, is not worth saving. So we'll say, you know, Derek. It's not worth saving. Next time, perhaps you happen to fail. Uh, refuses to accept your help when he needs it because he's a moron. Uh, keeps coming for you for help. Uh, you have others to heal. So you can either pick from that list and allocate based on that, or you can kind of come up with them on your own. Uh, okay. Then there's relationships to NPCs. Uh, these are a little less, like these, you, you absolutely have to pick somebody you hate like a rival you absolutely so like it's an npc in your habitat this is going to be important because i'm going to i need these i need npcs and it kind of builds out the habitats gives me people to work with when you go on specific operations or missions it allows me to kind of personalize them sometimes for certain stories so that's kind of all important so underneath where it says relationships to pcs for for healer for instance like the examples they have you hate the healer somebody else who believes he's better than you like an, and like another like another cat healer in your tribe, hypothetically, or mm -hmm. another example, you hate the scavenger who you saw sampling the medical alcohol, you know, stuff like that. Then under the you want to protect, it's got you want to protect your child who you value above all else, uh, or you want to protect the scavenger who procures healing drugs for you. So let's think about this. Then we're going to start with Melissa and Logan, because both of you are from the same habitat. Sorry, is there so I'm on page 37 looking at this. Is there a, a much larger table for like the relationship things, or is it all no? The, it these are just okay. suggestions, like you gotcha. can you can freely take from here, or you can just make them up on your own. Basically, okay. each PC gets a sentence, uh, and then you're creating your everyone's creating one NPC that they hate and one NPC yeah. that they want to protect from their habitat. So, I'm going to start with Melissa okay. and Logan just because they're in the same habitat, and then we'll kind of go around this, the room so in terms of like pc do you think the two of you are gonna be like friends relative well it can't be relatives you're, well i guess you can be because you're in the same tribe it's so you're, you're 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 just a straight up badger right i'm a weasel a weasel okay um i'm small and that's also my talent is that i'm small okay and you're a big, and you're like a big tough badger, right? Yeah, I'm not huge. I'm, yeah, I'm I'm pretty moderate build. Like I'm 
definitely strong and stocky, but I'm not like lumbering. I'm not huge. And you're a warrior. If, if I, and she's a hunter too. So yeah. So if I were to go like shoulder to shoulder with a bear, he'd definitely have a good foot, two okay. feet on me. Based on what's in the book, um, like if I were just going to do kind of one of the standard ones, there's the one that's like, um, the other PC believes he's the best and the strongest. He's going to get you all in trouble one day. Okay. Like that could possibly, like, I don't, I mean, I don't really know how Logan's going to. No, that's definitely me. (laughs) Perfect. All right. Put it down. So, uh, Logan, uh, Logan's character was, um, Cujo 31. So put, so, so are we supposed to have four PC lines? Yeah. For each? Yeah. Oh, okay. I should have added them if I skipped yours. My bad. But I, I saw four. I saw four lines, but I thought you meant the PC, the I hate, I need to protect, and the my big dream. I thought those were the four lines total. The, I don't know. We need the the I hate, the I need to protect. Those are NPCs, PC okay. player character. So Melissa, for the first line, write Cujo thirty one believes he is the best and strongest. He will get you all in trouble one day. Okay. How would uh, Cujo feel towards Hamel seventy six? This tiny little uh, weasel hunter that that runs around the habitat um in, insignificant <laughs> oh wow what are some of the warrior options warrior options for you are tiny little insect he make always makes noise if he doesn't get it together you'll silence him permanently so that one sounds about right um is ravenous and eats all the food you catch is reliable companion you can trust in the wilderness i'll probably pick that one um, just because we're the same tribe, I'll see Melissa as a reliable companion. So Hamill. I like the, I the weak pop. link of the group. Needs to be disciplined <laughs> over and over. Uh, yeah, I, I thought I think I see different ones than you. Yeah, Logan. Warrior oh, is page 33. I'm, oh, I'm looking under Warrior. Should I be looking under Hunter? Uh, no, look under Warrior. I am I am looking under Warrior, too. Oh, I'm looking under Hunter. Oops. That's <laughs> okay. okay. Again, you you're like if you really just want to say like, Hamel 76 is small and insignificant that's perfectly fine too you can totally just write that like you don't have to go by what's on the book you can make up anything you want it's just sort of a way of fleshing out the party a little bit you know trying to establish relationships so I think there's nothing wrong with writing that Um, I'm gonna do Hamel 76 I'm just gonna say much weaker always in need of protection okay smaller sure okay makes sense Again, you all are going to know each other. Uh, you're going to be part of the same resistance cell, even though you're from different habitats, uh, different tribes. You're still going to be working together in this, you know, doing operations together around the valley. So you're also going to know each other. So um, ha- uh, Hamill 76, I, I, every time I think Hamill, I'm just like thinking Mark Hamill. I'm just thinking Joker. I just want to do a Joker voice. Um, okay, so then you've got three others. You've got an elderly scavenger who has a wagon. Uh, what's your what's your character's personality going to be like, Derek? What do you think? So um, I'm kind of uh, like, because I'm weak, I kind of distrust others. It's like, um, I'm, forget, I'm spacing the guy's name from Jaws, like the gruff old sea dog. Like, Quint. I'm, I'm exact. Yeah, thank Quint. you. Quint. Um, I'm, I'm just like that. I'm gruff. I'm old. I'm no nonsense. Love like, it. Ugh. So like, yeah, just, you know, five o'clock shadow all the time. think people are annoying, but have a soft heart on the inside. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Which will eventually uh, be revealed when, be you're, taken out of when you're bitten yeah. half by a shark. <laughs> okay. Uh, awesome. When you said Quint from Jaws, you completely figured, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Awesome. So the yeah. place we live, our habitat, it's called Paradise Valley, right? Uh, no, Paradise Valley is the whole valley. Uh, if you want to look, uh, so if you look in the handout section, uh, you can see the different habitats. So for the badgers, it's Badger Burrow. And so I put like a little picture of like. But Paradise Valley is the whole that's enclosure. The whole thing. That's where everything mm-hmm. takes place. Your specific habitat where you two stay regularly because you're not banished or anything yet uh, is the Badger Burrow. Okay. There's uh, there's a chapter in the the info I sent you that describes the badger burrow in a little bit more depth. And also we can just flesh it out. Like that's the thing that we're going to be able to do over time. Um, so Melissa hearing Derek describe his character as distrusting and kind of gruff uh, and Quint from jaws. And I've made you watch jaws like a thousand times. So what, uh, what do you think your, your 
attitude toward him is going to be? Um, I would say because he's older. Older, yeah. So I'm thinking possibly like a respect Wasted resources. Uh, well, oh no, kind of that like knowledge. Like, okay, you've kind of got some knowledge, but like, kind of wish you weren't such an asshole. So, like, <laughs> get the knowledge out of you. Kind of that, like, um, wary, wary, but respectful. So, like, a begrudging respect. You're muted, I think. Yeah, I am. Yeah, Sorry. no, I was. So, like, a I'm begrudging excited. respect, I was going to say. Like, begrudgingly yeah. respects him despite his attitude. Yeah. Okay. So, write that in. Perfect. Uh, Long, what are you thinking? Like, what is your character? What do you think about in terms of personality wise? Like, how how do you how do you come off to like other people in the group? You think? Oh, uh, I was gonna think like sort of know it all. Okay. Like you should be doing this. Why you're, aren't you doing that? You're, you're a seer. Yeah. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> um, okay. Are you? Do you think you're gonna be? You think you're right most of the time, or do you think you're you're wrong? Like. I know you personally think you're going to be right. Like your character is going to think they're right all the time. <laughs> but is this going to be one of those situations where like they're, they think they're right all the time and they are, which is, can be infuriating, but also helpful. Or is it going to be one of those things where they think they're right all the time, but they're really not, which can be frustrating. <laughs> what are you mm-hmm. thinking? I think, yeah, I think more of like, they'll think they'll be right, but it somehow ends up not being like exactly what they think. Okay. The future is ever moving and mysterious. It's always like the opposite. Okay. Yeah. All right. Irony. So Logan, you've heard two characters. You got one character who's a, a grumpy old man. So you so you have to figure out what your attitude towards Derek's character is gonna be. And then you've got this young, don't forget, Long is a youngster who thinks they knows <laughs> it, knows everything. Okay. Yeah, I already have my I already have my uh mcleod 64 arrogance will get the better of him That's okay really, that's perfect one. i like it i'm still trying to think of Derek. okay another insignificant being in my eyes i guess okay. but i need to <laughs> oh, figure out that's funny because you're like the last person show. i have uh ashley what, what would you how would you describe like generally obviously we start role playing things are going to change but like generally yeah. what are you thinking so far about like the personality of your character She's going to be a little eccentric, but like also it's resigned. Because, like, an Ashley mind character. you, yeah. yeah. So she's wearing like a full, like, Victorian dress, like that she found. It's like, you know, well taken care of, but like also gross because she's like a cat. Poofs, like poofs on the shoulders. <laughs> yeah, she's got like poofy shoulders <laughs> and <laughs> she is got, she's a moonshiner. So she's always making some sort of drink. And it's like, that's like, think wine ant. Like, okay. <laughs> okay. My wine ant became a pill ant too, so I gotta be yeah, be careful. Oh god. Gotta be careful no. there. Okay. She's right. gotta she's gotta be a little careful. Okay. But she's also an Ashley character, so who the fuck knows? All right. <laughs> I have all my relationships now. Okay. Are other people kind of doing this as we go, as like we're kind of yeah. describing? Uh, yeah, I came yeah. up with one from a cloud. I used one from the book because he's young. Okay. So I went with the like he's ravenous and eats all of the damn food that I scavenge. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, I like it. Uh, Logan, what do you got for the other ones we haven't heard yet? While well, everyone else is thinking, um, for Tchaikovsky, is that how you say it? Yeah. Um, I have kind of smelly, trustworthy, but not someone I want to be around. <laughs> okay, that's that's um, pretty good. And yeah. then for Helena Seven, I have my type of gal always has something to drink. Nice. So nice. whether whether she's healing me or getting me fucked up, then she's someone <laughs> I want to be around. She's someone okay. I'm going to keep at all times plus she's the healer too just just yeah. just from like gaming perspective protect exactly. your healers yeah perfect okay awesome um anybody else got ideas what are we thinking um, i've got all my relationship things filled out let's I hear him Derek. Off. yeah it's here cool so the cloud 64 um i put a valued friend of mine because he helps me locate the more rare artifacts with the seeing ability cool i like it for hamill 76 this works perfectly with what melissa said i put she annoys me because she always wants materials for trap building. Okay, awesome, awesome. Uh, Kujo41, I said, treats me like I'm nothing more than a dirty old man. He was the last <laughs> one I was a harder time figuring it out. Okay. And then my favorite is Helena7, a bad influence for her wicked bruise, which caused me to lose time, but I can't stay away. Okay, <laughs> nice. Oh my gosh, this is going to be a drunken pack of animals just wandering around. <laughs> Never going to succeed at anything. Uh, okay, Good. Who else? who else has got them figured out? 
Um, for long, I put he always refuses to accept my help when he needs it. Moron. Um, <laughs> Melissa, this is a suggestion from the, the healer page. <laughs> Melissa, precious, always has the best meats. Keep friendship. Derek, because I'm a carnivore and they're not really liked in mm. you know the general vicinity. That's true. Yeah. Um, Derek keeps coming to you for help. You have others to heal. Um, and Logan always ends up in trouble, and I always have to save him. <laughs> okay, I like it. Other thoughts? Who else? Who else has got to go still? Uh, uh, let's see. Melissa and Long are left. Yeah, I just have Logan as strong enough to carry me when I'm exhausted. <laughs> Like a little baby. Yeah. Like, oh. A uh, wonderful throne. I wonder who's bigger, actually. I have Melissa as why hasn't she performed a heroic deed by now? What is she waiting Ooh. for? Oh, wow. Call out. Wow. Um, I have Ashley as she'll die soon. So I keep reminding her about it. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you on Tuesday. Remember, you're going to die on the 17th. Oh my God. And then Derek, I have him seems to doubt my divination divinations. Okay. Divinations. Yeah. How rude. Are you going to channel like my character where I'm like on the seventh moon of the 14th month is the time <laughs> that you will pass away slowly in my arms. <laughs> Every every NPC you meet is just going to have Big Pharma's voice because I love it so much. Big Pharma. That's it. That's all it's going to be. All of mine. <laughs> Every single one. Uh, Melissa, finish, this, finish it off in terms of relationships. So the last one that I had was with Helena Seven, okay. and I'm going with the um, kind of like her. She's pretty popular, but it would be nice if she weren't drunk all the time and were a little more like... <laughs> Sure. Who says I'm herself. drinking? Right. Okay. I'm getting y'all drunk. Okay. So all of our relationships are good, right? So now figure out based upon what you just described in terms of your relationships. And you don't have to necessarily tell each other this, but you can only ha- so you can only have one buddy. Pick who you think your buddy would be, and we'll do like a surprise reveal in a minute. Big big surprise. <laughs> I think I know what yours is going to be. Logan. You basically revealed it. Does the buddy pairing have to be mutual, or you can be buddies with somebody who isn't buddies with you back? It does not have to be mutual. I don't think so. I'm, I don't. I never. I never read anything like that. So yeah, I think you're good. So obviously, Logan's is is Helena, right? You got me. Yeah. <laughs> figured it out. You're so transparent. Okay. Got it figured out. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm looking at buddy when you have Yeah, you just you just peel you just pick the PC you feel you're closest to. Doesn't necessarily have to be reciprocated. What was your name again, Logan? Um it's Kujo thirty one. Alright, I just put Kujo. Because he carries me all the time. Okay, so that's your okay. Uh, Derek, who'd you pick? I uh, picked uh, Helena Seven. <laughs> Everyone's buddy because the booze. Uh, Ashley, who'd you pick? Uh, I picked Cujo just because I'm weak. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, Melissa, who'd you pick? I picked Chai Forty. Which is my nickname for you, by the way. I'm not saying Tricot. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, that's it's fine. 40. Okay. So uh, nobody likes so nobody likes Melissa. Is that fine? That's fine. No one's buddied with Long. It either. changes. Well, that's understandable. He's a young person who thinks he knows everything. <laughs> he's a brat. That's his that's uh, what I should just change it to. He's brat. A, he's refuses a, to he's accept a my help. Fluffy fox is what he is. Okay. <laughs> Next thing I need, next thing we need is we need your, I need your NPCs. So basically you all get to come up with NPCs right now from your habitats. Uh, so each one of you gets to pick somebody you hate. Uh, you Do just, they have to be in our habitat? Uh, yes, I believe okay. so. Yeah. Okay. Let me double check. I, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. Um, okay. So you pick somebody you hate. So it's just a rival. Uh, somebody you want to protect. It's the other thing. So when you if you know them, shout them out. Give me a name too. So like maybe why you hate them. Uh, 
Um, for my hate, I'll put O'Donnell. Okay. There's, I thought you were going to say O'Doors. No. Oh. Okay, O'Donnell. Why do you hate O'Donnell? Uh, he'll be the tribe leader. He'll lead us to ruin sort of thing. Okay. Got it. All right. Then um, anybody else? Hate Does or... it have to be exactly like what? I have to change mine a little bit because I didn't know they had to be in order. Uh, right. You can tweak it. You can you can choose you can decide for yourself. It doesn't have to be the specifics, but uh, I would like to keep it in tribe though, just to make it easier. Uh, I'll probably okay. have you at some point. Maybe we'll probably come up with other NPCs too. Uh, so I don't. So like I'll make up some obviously, but it's always cool to get you guys to make them as well. So uh, for me, I'm going to hate uh, Luke Bryan. Um, from my tribe, stole many rare artifacts from me and got credit for finding them. So I think it will be like, a, I used to have a little hoard spot and then, you know, I got ransacked, so now I keep all my shit on me. Okay. Luke Bryan? Yeah, because I hate country music. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Anybody else have somebody they hate or someone that they want to protect? Yeah, I have mine now. Okay. What do you got? I just, I just need the number for one. So my need to protect is the tribe elder, Gretzky99, who uh, trained and guided me to be the strong warrior who I am today. <laughs> and uh, the other one is, I'll tell you the number in a second. Oh, it's 24. Okay. Uh, Chelios24, who's the <laughs> nice. hunter who is the pride of the tribe. Wow. Did you hear that, Melissa? It's not you. I think it's pretty clear I'm not the pride of anything. <laughs> I've got the lowest rank of anybody. I'm mm. not. I'm not starting off particularly popular. So Logan, you want to protect Gretzky, and you don't like the hunter? Correct. Okay. I don't. I like to. I'm very uh, prideful. I'm very you're, selfish. You're jealous. Very self-centered. Yeah. Okay. So pretty much anyone who is seen as better than me, I immediately just kind of am mm -hmm. intimidated. Not. I wouldn't say intimidated by, it, but right I, i'm not a fan of okay uh melissa do you have your other ones from the badger trap you can pick the same people um, and have different attitudes or you can come up with brand new npcs too i'm fine with having multiple i was gonna have my hate be a badger who basically like bullied me um and is make know, it chelios we'll just kill him before we leave <laughs> okay badgers <laughs> are bigger than weasels so it's kind of the whole like bullied gets the bigger hunts all that kind of stuff okay do you want it to be chelios or do you want to do somebody else uh can Ch is chelios a badger chelios he, ju he just said i hunter. just put hunter yeah. yeah he can be a badger okay that's fine okay cool uh and who do you want to protect in the badger tribe melissa i'm not that fast i just came up with one okay <laughs> i'll cycle back who's ready with something uh do protect okay we're in the dog tribe yeah I'll do uh I'll do slippy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who is Slippy? <laughs> uh he's a warrior. Okay. Why do you want to protect him? Uh he just can't seem to do anything right. Oh, that's nice of you. Does him. he always want you to get these guys off of him? <laughs> I'm just gonna call him Justin really quick. Can't seem to do anything. Okay, got it. All right. So your dog is done. Still need one more from Badger. Cat, Ashley, we haven't got anything from you. What's going oh, on? Oh, I'm ready. Okay, let's hear it. So I hate Cicero19. Um, he's a healer who keeps injuring himself to spend time with me and sample my drinks. Oh my god. Ooh. Man, I wrote that wrong. Sounds like the young doctor. Healer. <laughs> Wait, good doctor, you mean? Uh no, the young doctor from the young doctor's notebook. Oh, okay, okay. So it's a healer who keeps intentionally injuring themselves to steal your deep, you steal your drinks. Basically, yeah. That's some and then stuff. hang on, I can only I can only write so so fast. Sorry, that's all good. Can I share my dream? <laughs> yeah, in a minute. I, okay, I, I'm gonna. I mean, you're gonna type you're gonna type them in, but I just want to get the NPCs down. But yeah, go ahead, okay. share the dream. 
Uh, my dream is to take a life for once. Ooh, I can teach you. You're like, that's, why, <laughs> that's why we're buddies. You're like, you're like I, I, want, I want to I kill. I want to feel the power. <laughs> How do I make the alcohol too potent? I can't. That's, why, that's why I don't use weapons. The feeling of taking a life like, with your bare hands is... But you're a badger. You don't have. I was gonna say your badger hands, hands. and and they're your claws. Uh, yeah. Okay. They're not. They're not badgers. bear hands. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I need to protect Octavia Seven. She's the tribe leader, who's also my sister. Okay. Nice. And you got all these How in your lives. Yep. Sister and tribe leader. Got it. Okay. Perfect. Uh, let's see. I need one more from the reptile. Okay, Luke Bryan. Yeah. You hate who do you want to yep. protect? Uh, Serge S E R J 07. Um, and it's a warrior. Uh, he's just protected me many times and I've not been able to escape danger. I get that reference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, cool. And Melissa, so the one that I want to protect is going to be my older brother, who's going to be Hamilton 74. <laughs> who has a critical injury so i kind of always have to like look out for him um and so my dream is kind of related to that of trying to like find some sort of like cure or something nice. that would kind of help him be a productive member of the group again i like how you tied it together perfect so that's your dream you got ashley's dream do you guys have dreams yeah i have a dream okay what's your dream that uh people of no i'm just kidding uh become known <laughs> as the most fearsome fighter in paradise valley yeah just you're all about just being the best okay yep. i like it uh derek long you got something or yes for your big dream oh yeah i'll do the uh wants to find a new safe haven for the tribe i've seen in my visions nice uh derek what do you got i was just gonna say to find the perfect artifact that will strike the tribe with awe awesome perfect all right so Make sure those are in because I'm going to pull that info from your character sheets as we're you know making stuff. Uh, if you're on your if you're on your roll page as well, you'll see there's the gear section it talks about your mm -hmm. starting gear. You can roll your d6s. A lot of you are going to have to roll d6s for rations. So um, for so when you're when you're putting your gear in, uh, there's in, in in this game there's three tiers of gear. Well, four technically. There's tiny. Tiny is something that can can be fit can fit into a closed fist. There's light, uh, there's basic, and there's heavy. Um, so light is like, well, let me start with basic. Basic is basically one line, so it doesn't really work the same way in the character sheet we're using. But essentially, if you have five strength, that means you have a carrying capacity of ten. So it's always two times your your strength, uh, except for for Derek specifically. Uh, so that would mean technically you would be able to carry 10 basic items because each basic item is effectively like a one line light is like a half. So you could conceivably carry tw like if you had, if you had 10 strength, you can conceivably carry 20 light items and obviously you can combine. Uh, and, and then heavy is basically two, uh, two, two regular items. So that means if you had a strength of 10, you can only carry five total heavy items. So any sort of combination of those that gets to your, your maximum is, uh, is your, is, is like what you can carry at any given time. Um, tiny items don't over encumber you, but you do have to put them on your list. So you know that you have them. The basic rule of thumb in this game is if it's not written on your character sheet, you don't have it. It's not with you. You left it somewhere. You forgot it back at the habitat, etc. Um, some of you also are going to have, if you're, if you're taking a weapon that's got ammunition, so a sling or something like that, you got a roll. Uh, those do count towards encumbrance, but only if you have like a, a lot of them. Uh, so if you, if you only like at the beginning, it's not going to be an issue, uh, but 10 pieces of ammunition is, is light. Uh, 20 is regular, 40 is heavy. So at the start of the game, most of you just start with like a D6 ammunition. So whether it's arrows or stones. And so those would be treated as a light. So you can go ahead and roll your stuff now for your rations and for whatever your starting gear is and add those to your gear sheets.
How do I roll for rations? It's a D6 uh, for you, for warrior. Oh, am I just rolling uh, like a blanket D6? Yeah, just a regular oh, okay. D6. I was, just, I was just looking for a spot to roll it. Yeah, you start, you start with 2D6 rations of food and D6 of water. Oh, Ashley. I'm oh. going to die. Oh, that's a lot of food. Good thing Ashley needs some. I got I got three waters and ten food. Ashley, doesn't, except... Ashley doesn't need food. She's got her mint juleps to give her nutrition. <laughs> and that goes under, uh, I can put that under grub and water. Is that for supplies. both my water and my... Um... Uh, it tells you in your healer, the healer thing at the bottom, what you get. Up. Uh no, that was the first one. So that's that's how much food you have. Roll another one, Ashley, for how much water you have. Great. Water and food are separate. Okay. So you have one food and three water. Okay. Uh, Need that water to make those drinks. You can take a look at the items and decide if you if you have choices between items, you can pick what you want. You don't have to worry about it right now. Um uh because we're getting close to the end here. Uh, so you can kind of take a look at that and put them in your put them in your in your sheets as soon as possible. Uh, however, because it's helpful for me to have that kind of info. Um, okay, so then the last thing for character creation is, and this is something again you can do, you can do between now and when we play again. You have to describe your den, like where you stay, where you sleep. Uh, Melissa, you might describe your den as being you and your brother or something like that, whatever it might be. Uh, so you want to describe. Not just you want to. We want to get into like the descriptive element of this. So it's, it's make sure you have good descriptions of your own character, but also good descriptions of like your den, so we can start fleshing out the world a bit. That kind of thing. Uh, you don't need to do that right now, but have that for for next time. Um, I do want to touch on one other thing before we we call it for the night. As again, we're nearing eight. I told Ashley I'd get her out of here at eight. Um, so thank you. I've mentioned, yeah, no problem. I've mentioned that um, you guys are members of a resistance. That's that's the overarching story of this of this whole campaign. Is that you're a resistance cell fighting to find a way to free the animals, to get out of Paradise Valley, etc., to overthrow whatever of the the oppressing watchers that you have. And well, a lot of the game is just like any other role-playing game. You're going to go out on missions. Some of them are going to be social. You're going to try to convince some people. Some of them are going to be mystery, puzzle solving stuff. Some of them are going to be fighting, etc. A little mix of all that kind of stuff. So all that's fine. But the there's this other kind of meta game that goes on. And, and all of the Mutant Year Zero games have something like this. You all are, are not just a resistance cell, but you're one of the core or the upper echelon ones. You're like, you're part of the trust in the sense and the inner core and that means you get to have a say in determining who goes on what mission uh and so if you look in the journal under handouts i'll show it to you right now uh there's this little resistance sheet that i'm showing to you and it's just this big uh it's this big excel spreadsheet basically so what we do is we have what are called strategic turns and these will happen every so often. We're not going to do one tonight. It takes too long. Um, it might be, we might do it every week. We might do it every other week. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of see how, uh, how the pace of the game goes. Um, but you all are kind of dictating the events of the entire Valley uh, because you're not the only resistance cell. There are a bunch of others. And you're going to like almost like an RTS game, like a high level strategy game. You are going to take, you're going to dictate which cells perform different operations in different areas. And so you all secretly, without me knowing, will be able to assign the cells that you have access to, to specific operations in specific locations. And I'll give you a chart of all the different operations, but the operations are a lot like trying to increase support of the insurgency for the resistance, or there could be stuff like trying to like uh, ambush uh, the watchers or trying to root out uh, uh, people who are working with the watchers and kill them or something like that. Things like that. Like there's all sorts of different operations. You all are also going on an operation. You guys kind of pick which ones you want to go on. We play yours out in real time. Like you're actually going on the mission. You're talking to the people. You're fighting whatever needs to get fought, et cetera. All the other ones are in this on the back, the backdrop of the game, and we just roll dice to sort of determine outcome. 
Because while you all are secretly assigning where these cells are going to go and where they're going to operate, I have a bunch of watcher resources that I too am secretly assigning and going out. And so on every strategic turn, you all figure out where your stuff goes. I figure out where my stuff goes. Then we reveal at the same time and based upon where I allocated my 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 support, my my capacity, you all allocated your cells, certain things will happen. Uh, now, fundamentally, there's sort of two things that you're getting. You're, you're increasing population and you're worrying about insurgency level. Population is obvious what that, you know, what that means is how many people are active in that tribe. But the reason population is important is because you need at least every cell within a tribe needs 50 uh, population. So you can only have one cell per 50 population. So if you have like the dog tribe at the start of the game, for instance, has two pop 200 population. They don't have any active cells right now. And so one of the operations you could do is to try to develop cells, to try to recruit people to the resistance. That could be an operation that you do or that you send one of the other NPC cells to go and do. Um, insurgency is the other thing. Insurgency is, is a, it's just a rating of like zero to 100, basically. The higher the number, the more likely they are to be receptive to being resistance members and it also impacts like the success rating of certain things so you'll see that the dog the dog tribe like i said they're kind of the most complicit in all of this they're like the 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 watchers give them special treatment and stuff like that and so they have a very low insurgency rating but the rabbit tribe are batshit crazy and they're like crazy gung-ho military militaristic they have a fairly high insurgency rating. And then you see the other words kind of spread out in between. And so that rating kind of determines how active they are in the insurgency. So you all are going to be able to control this. And so every strategic turn is basically a month in game time. And so we're kind of we're kind of doing big picture. And we'll we'll and it'll help give us the backdrop of how the the valley is changing over the course of the campaign beyond just your individual missions because your individual missions again we're going to play it out like we would play any other role-playing game but all this other stuff is more big picture in the background um and each like when and then you also kind of get to dictate a lot of your missions obviously i'm going to craft some of that some of it's going to be random like random encounters and things like that others it's going to be like what i'm crafting based upon the drama but then you all are kind of picking where you get to go um, I'll put more info on this and I'll have like, I'll actually make a fillable, a fillable spreadsheet because this one's just an image just to show you what I mean. Uh, but you'll be able to kind of do this. And over the course of, and over the course of the game, you're going to be able to get new cells. Some cells are going to die and get caught. Uh, some cells are going to get captured. Populations might grow in certain places. Populations might shrink. It's possible. Watchers can completely wipe out tribes completely. So like, there is no more cat tribe. It's totally possible for that to happen. Uh, so those are all things that happen and kind of contribute to the story. Uh, so I wanted to just give you kind of a basic, a basic understanding that that's going to be part of like what we're doing, if that makes sense. Um, all right. Any questions about that? Nope. I mean, just again, big picture stuff, like the specifics of how the roles work out, which operations are, that's something we don't have to necessarily cover right now. Um, we'll, we'll go over that like in the discord or something like that. And whenever we do our first strategic turn, um, but that's about it. Um, in terms of character creation, like we're basically done with character creation. Um, what are we playing next? While you're all here, I'm going to get tomorrow. you recorded. Oh, geez. <laughs> oh, geez. Um, when do you guys want to play next? I know Fridays and Saturdays were like our, our, yeah. our times derek uh, we were trying we're, we're gonna try to do this weekly right mm -hmm. um derek you have a i think i think we pre we preferred saturdays though right we were only doing friday this week i can't remember why oh uh, long you were doing clash or something right yeah yeah, yeah so it's yeah, and i was gonna be unavailable tomorrow okay so <clears throat> next saturday though derek you got a wedding right i probably won't be home until about eight o'clock on saturday uh what does everyone's fridays look like next week I'm fine on Friday or Should Saturday as long as I have a notice. Ashley, uh, could you do this again at, at Friday? Like this 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 time again, Ashley? If yeah, if it's six to eight. Yeah, the six to eight. Same time, yeah. same thing. And and I'll and I'll again I'll keep it as close to that as possible. Yeah. yeah. 
We can do that. Okay, so let's plan for Friday next week, uh, six to eight, for our first real session where we'll actually get into the Ooh. stories and and definitely read develop through our voices yeah develop voices and stuff like that develop descriptions and yeah we're gonna have a lot of fun just gonna bark the entire time <laughs> <laughs> do foxes actually bark regularly long's actually gonna long's gonna pre-program all of his dialogue to I come up as subtitles <laughs> okay uh Take a look at the PDFs. Then you've seen some more stuff. Uh, again, if you want to tinker with your skills, since we didn't actually play anything, uh, nothing's locked in yet until we actually start really playing. Uh, so it's going to be roll my entire character. No. <laughs> <laughs> Careful with that. Uh, but if you want to adjust like your skill, like your skill point attribute and attribute points, that stuff's fine. Um, please make sure before like you get out of the game tonight that you have all of your your NPCs and your PC relationships and stuff in there. Cause I will need that uh, as I develop some things. Uh, anything else? What was your name again, Melissa? Hamilton Hamil. or is that your brother? Hamil. Hamil. I'm Hamill 76 brother is Hamilton 74. Nice. Cool. Cause I think there was a Scotty Hamilton. I think was also, a, I think. All right. Nice, nice. All right. So if you're in chat channel, I don't even know if anyone's in chat channel. My head's spinning because, uh, uh, yeah, they're teaching stuff. But if you're still here, if you've been watching or if you were watching at any point or if you're catching this on YouTube or something like that, uh, thanks for hanging out with us for Session Zero as we're trying to figure some stuff out. Um, next episode, next week, uh, again, we're trying to do this weekly uh, as best we can. Uh, we'll actually start diving into the stories and playing some. Uh, you can also, if you're interested in listening to more of our stuff, we do Adventures in Lollygagging. It's a podcast f- uh, with the Zweihander system. It comes out every Monday, anywhere you get podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so just look for us there. Uh, you can also catch us uh, on online, thelollygaggers.com. It's got all of our content, including some like some playthroughs of certain games, a couple other podcasts that we do, uh, some other YouTube uh, videos from like our Shinobagami games, stuff like that. Uh, Please uh, take a look uh, and...